Scripture reading this morning is from Mark chapter 6, verses 45 through 56. Jesus walks on the water. Immediately he made his disciples get into the boat and go on ahead to the other side, to Bethsaida, where he dismissed the crowd. After saying farewell to them, he went up on the mountain to pray. When evening came, the boat was out on the lake, and he was alone on the land. When he saw that they were straining at the oars against an adverse wind, he came toward them early in the morning, walking on the lake. He intended to pass them by, but when they saw him walking on the lake, they thought it was a ghost and cried out, for they all saw him and were terrified. But immediately he spoke to them and said, Take heart, it is I. Do not be afraid. Then he got into the boat with them, and the wind ceased, and they were utterly astounded, for they did not understand about the loaves, but their hearts were hardened. When they, came, when they had crossed over, they came to the land of Gesarnet and moored the boat. When they got out of the boat, people at once recognized him and rushed about that whole region and began to bring the sick on mats to wherever they heard he was. And wherever he went, into villages or cities or farms, they laid the sick in the marketplace and begged him that they might touch even the fringe of his cloak, and all who touched it were healed. I'm just a setup man. You're actually going to hear the audio from Laura in a minute. Um, but I'm going to set up her sermon for her a little bit. Not what they expected or wanted out of their vacation. Laura and Marty are recovering from illness, but Laura was able to record her message on audio. So how many of you listen to podcasts? All right, how many of you have no idea what a podcast is? Okay. If you don't know what a podcast is, think of radio. Like you're going to hear an audio um, message today. Today's message will be a little bit like a podcast. You're basically going to get the audio version from Laura, made with some pictures to help you remember what she looks like, um, in case you need that visual cue. I'm just a setup man, so I'll get things going and turn it over to Joe, who will give that um, audio going. Today's topic is faith over fear. And I'm going to frame today's message using the backstories of two of our hymns today. We just sang It Is Well With My Soul, one of my favorite songs. And this song came from Horatio Spafford. Horatio had a, had, had a difficult life. If you think you've got things rough, here's Horatio's story. He lost a fortune during the Chicago Fire of 1871. Shortly after he lost a great deal of money, um, he lost his four-year-old son to scarlet fever, not, not long after the fire. Just kind of in a state of despair, he sent his wife and his four daughters on vacation by ship to England, and he would meet them later after he attended to some business. On the way to England, that ship sank, killing his four daughters. Um, his wife survived, sending that message from England. On his trip to meet his wife, the captain of the ship he was on brought him near the tragic spot of the crash, and he somehow was filled, instead of dread and sorrow, he was filled with a sense of great peace. And he didn't really understand that great peace, but as he felt that peace come over him, he wrote these words, when peace like a river attendeth my way, when sorrows like sea billows roll, whatever my lot thou hast taught me to know, it is well, it is well with my soul. It might be worth taking the hymnal and, and looking up the words later on this week. Just read the words, it is well with my soul. It's a beautiful song that has lots of good words. Our final song that we will sing after the sermon today will be Because He Lives, which is a Methodist favorite and a favorite of many churches. This song is by Bill and Gloria Gaither. The Gaithers sing or have produced lots and lots of, of hymns. Gloria wrote the words to the song when she was expecting a child. Bill was ill with mono and he was not recovering well. It was a real tough recovery as, as, as you know it can be with mono. Gloria went through a period of great stress and anxiety at the time and her stress, she says, was basically just over the state of the world. 
And many of us can probably relate to that. We fret about what we see on the news and just the way the world is. She was, she was concerned about things like drug abuse. She was concerned of things like God's and lack of importance in secular life. She was concerned by racial, racial tension in the world, by crime. And she found herself in a Great Depression, and the thought of bringing a child into such a chaotic world sent Gloria further into depression. Gloria Gaither says she doesn't know how, but after a long time of worry, a deep calm came to her, and she wrote the words to the song. And in that song, it says, God sent his son. They called him Jesus. We're reminded that Christ came to this earth, and the purpose for his coming was that we might be able to face tomorrow with all the uncertainty that it brings. And she also reminds us that God holds the future in his hands and makes life worth the living for all who trust in him. It may not always be right or okay in this world, but faith over fear can lead us to calm assurance. So let's hear the message from Mary, uh, from Laura on our audio about faith over fear. First, I'd like to say hello to everybody. Sorry that I'm not there in person. This was uh, not the vacation that we had planned, but uh, both Marty and I came down with COVID uh, during our vacation. And so I'm unable to be with you this morning. But I did want to share this. <laughs> Last May, Marty and I loaded up the Subaru and we headed off to Chicago to see an Australian band called Crowded House that we really enjoyed. We were supposed to have gone the year before, but the concert got postponed because of an injury to one of the band members. So, after waiting longer than expected, we began our adventure to see this bucket list band in person before they stopped touring altogether. After all, the original members are not getting any younger. The sun was shining, and we were playing the music of the band through the car radio. Then it started to look cloudy, and as we looked into the horizon, it was pretty dark. I used my phone to search the weather radar and see what was going on. Well. We were heading into heavy rain is what was going on. So I mapped out our path and how it aligned with the movement of the storm and told Marty we just needed to slow down a little so the storm would move to the east before we reached it. Well, that plan would have worked if the storm had not slowed its movement and increased in strength. We got into heavy downpours on the highway, but we were able to keep moving just a lot slower than usual as the wipers beat a steady rhythm out on the windshield. And as we traveled a little bit farther, I looked at the radar and saw that we were headed for the center of the storm that was bright red. I like the color red, but I know when you see it on weather radar, it is not good. The rain began coming down in sheets, which made visibility almost impossible. And we could barely see the red taillights of the cars and trucks ahead. Finally, the wind began to blow so hard from the sides and the rain was so intense <coughs> excuse me, that everyone came to a stop on the highway, which is a scary situation all in itself because I'm wondering who is not going to be paying attention and then cause a chain reaction accident. Marty's an excellent driver and he pulled us up alongside a semi-truck to help block some of the wind. And I tell you, I was pretty sure we were going to die in this storm. The wind was whipping around our car. The rain made everything look white through the windshield, but I could see dark shapes flying through the white but couldn't tell what they were. The truck next to us was swaying. Marty was gripping the steering wheel, praying. I held my hands up as if I could hold back the wind and the rain and just kept praying, Lord have mercy, Christ have mercy, Lord have mercy. There was nothing more we could do to protect ourselves from whatever was about to happen as the wind picked up speed and seemed to be blowing in circles now. I have been afraid many times in my life, but I think this time I was terrified. Terrified that I might die before I got to see my bucket list band but more importantly, terrified that our kids and grandkids might lose both of us at the same time. The disciples were terrified once. They were in a big storm, which Mark describes in chapter 4. It says, beginning at verse 37, a great gale rose, and the waves beat into the boat, so that the boat was already being swamped. 
that he, being Jesus, was in the stern, asleep on the cushion. And they woke him up and said to him, Teacher, do you not care that we are perishing? He woke up and rebuked the wind and said to the sea, Peace, be still. Then the wind ceased and there was a dead calm. He said to them, Why are you afraid? Have you still no faith? And in today's story from chapter 6, we find the disciples in a boat alone struggling against strong winds. Jesus had decided he was going to get from point A to point B by walking on the water. And when the disciples see him, they believe he is a ghost and are terrified. He identifies himself and tells them to not be afraid. And when he gets into the boat with them, the winds die down. Jesus calms the wind with his presence and his words. He calms the disciples in the same way. In the midst of our storm on the highway, Marty and I called on the presence of Christ to be with us to calm the storm happening inside and outside the car. And the more that we prayed, the calmer I felt inside, even though the weather had not changed. After about six minutes, which felt like forever, the rain began to let up and the dark sky began to get brighter with rays of sun coming through in places. The cars and trucks put their gears back into drive mode and slowly began moving down the highway again. I was looking around at the branches and leaves all over as we were driving by a large field. My breathing was slowly returning to normal and I was uttering praise and thanks to God. I wonder how long it took for the disciples breathing to return to normal when Jesus got into the boat with them after they thought he was a ghost. When I looked to my right, I saw a beautiful rainbow. It was like God was saying, trust me in the storms. There is beauty that happens when light shines through dark times. There's a song that I really like called I'll Praise You in the Storm by Casting Crown. And that song has gotten me through many a tough moment in the last 19 years. I'll praise you in this storm. I will lift my hands. For you are who you are, no matter where I am. And every tear I cry, you hold in your hand. And though my life is torn, I will praise you in this storm. Jesus calms our fears with his presence and his words just as he did for his earliest disciples. It was Jesus' presence in the storms where he calmed them, having them recognize that he was there and trying to get his disciples to trust and have faith that his presence was what they needed. And Jesus offers words of comfort and assurance. Do not be afraid. Peace, be still. He speaks those words to his early disciples, and he speaks them to us today. It's important to trust that Jesus is with us, and that Jesus loves us, and wants the best for us, and that we believe in who Jesus says he is, and have faith in him. We can grow our faith in a few ways. We can strengthen our faith in his word through prayer, and scripture reading. His words in scripture can speak peace and comfort to us today. Read the scriptures and personalize them for you. For example, you might put your name into the sentence like, Laura, do not be afraid because Jesus is present, cares, and has the power to change the circumstances. The peace be still. Laura, be still. We need to let go of fear and give our control over to God. It doesn't mean that we won't feel fear, but we don't let fear be the primary driver of our thoughts and actions. We pray for increased faith in Christ, and we seek holy wisdom to guide our response to scary circumstances. And we can find peace in Christ's presence through prayer and meditation, as we focus on Christ with us intentionally and learn to listen for him. 
We have to spend intentional time with Jesus so that we can recognize Jesus' presence with us in times of crisis, as well as every single day of our lives. Jesus spoke to the wind, and it calmed down. He spoke to his disciples, do not be afraid, and they calmed down. It was Jesus' presence, physical presence, with the disciples and his words that helped calm the fears, because Jesus is a fear calmer. We can choose faith over fear, but it takes practice, and it takes knowing the one that we can trust in with all of our heart to have that kind of faith in Jesus. I pray that as you continue through this week, that you will ask for Christ to be present with you, to make himself known through the power of the Holy Spirit. Ask God to help you increase your faith so that you might begin to recognize Christ's presence with you on a daily basis, as well as in those storms of life. And I pray that you'll continue to read the scriptures the words of Jesus, and realize that he is speaking those to his early disciples, and he is speaking those to current disciples, such as you and me. God bless. Thank you again. Welcome. Mm -hmm.